I have to say I am awfully happy to be here, and uh, part of the reason I'm awfully happy to be here is because I've spent a lot of the last year reporting on tea parties, and uh, the people who uh, the people who imagine themselves to be populist because they want to demolish the government um, rather than take it over for the people, and uh, hand it over to the so-called free markets and the corporations. Now. Um, I don't know about you, but that is not exactly what I think of as populism. Uh, I think Peter Beinart uh, on the Daily Beast said it really well not too long ago. The Tea Partiers aren't standing up for the little guy, they're standing up to the little guy. And uh, so it's balm for the soul for me to be in a room full of people who understand populism and understand progressive possibilities in Texas and in America. And um, I think that, um, you know, I hope that we will use this session to get people fired up, thinking about populist possibilities for the future uh, based on what we, have, what we have accomplished and what we've done in the past. And, um, you know, I think that it's time for us to take back populism, not just the name, but the spirit of it. And uh, I, hope that, uh, I hope that we'll do that. And uh, Texas needs it, God knows, and uh, the whole country needs it. Um, I want to tell you what the format here is going to be. We're going to go, um, first we're going to start, I'm going to ask a, couple, a question to each of the panelists, uh, give them five minutes, and uh, five minutes with a one minute warning card to come <laughs> when you reach four. Um, and, um, and I hope that we'll hear some stories. Uh, populists are all good storytellers, and uh, all have some hellacious stories to tell. And, um, and uh, then we're going to ask, I'm going to ask another round of questions, uh, second round, and then we'll start uh, having some discussion between the panelists, I hope, with those questions, and then open it up to you guys and, uh, and have this, uh, this kind of freewheeling. Um, please be thinking about uh, questions that you want to ask based on what you're hearing or based on what you came thinking about, and, um, and we'll get started right now. Um, first, I'm going to start with Senator Harris. There's a, there's a biography of you that's titled uh, Fred Harris, His Journey from Liberalism to Populism. And I want to ask um, how and why you made that journey, uh, whether you think that uh, classic liberalism is, uh, is a lesser tool for, for economic justice, um, and uh, who or what inspired you to, uh, to become a populist and to, uh, to take that on. Um, the guy that wrote that, uh a history professor at the University of Oklahoma, never interviewed me. He didn't want to be, he thought he might be contaminated if he <laughs> interviewed me. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, I, and I don't think the title is, is, is quite correct. I, don't, I never thought of myself exactly as a sort of a typical New Deal liberal. I grew up in uh, southwestern Oklahoma. My folks were never involved in politics at all. But my dad did talk about the, the uh, uh, power of corporations, as, uh, as, as he said. Uh, when that book came out, or just before it came out, Jim Wright called me. You know, he uh, used to be a Speaker of the House here from Texas. And, and he said, I've been asked to uh, write a blurb for this book this guy's written about you. And he said, but I'm not going to write a word that you don't approve. And so he said, let me read you what I've... Uh, what I've written, and so he, he, he read me this short blurb, which is on the back of the book now, uh, with, with one change, he, and he got to the point where, toward the end, he said, and when he made his, when Fred Harris made his Quixotic, as he put it, his Quixotic run for president, uh, and, and so forth, and I said, when he finished, I said, well, that's, that's all right, go ahead. He said, you want to change any of it? And I said, no, that's fine. And he said, what about that Quixotic uh, run for uh, <laughs> president? I said, well, that's all right. <laughs> and he said, well, what if I change that to underfunded? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, we used to, uh, we were certainly supporters uh, of, of Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, we used to sit around and watch the radio when I was a kid. I don't know, we, we watched it. <laughs> Uh, and, and my folks were, uh, felt about Franklin Roosevelt, like I, one time I was down to, uh, in, involved with the, the coal miners' 
strike in uh, Harlan, Kentucky, Harlan County, Kentucky, and an old coal miner guy said to me, he said, when Franklin D. Roosevelt took his seat, we commenced to climb and we clung. <laughs> and that, and that's, a, that's exactly the way my people felt about uh, Franklin Roosevelt and, and the New Deal. But I, I never was exactly uh, a, 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 a New Deal liberal. When I went to the Senate in the 60s, uh, it was a time when uh, John Kenneth Galbraith, who was a national treasure in other ways, I think, uh, had just uh, written a book called uh, The Affluent Society. And uh, Arthur Schlesinger, Jr. was writing along the, the same line, sort of, now we've become an affluent society, and uh, we can turn our attention from uh, economic class uh, issues and problems and uh, think about uh, civil liberties and, and those sort of things. And they uh, sort of epitomized the idea of uh, sort of New Deal liberalism, or at least from some liberals I knew, some I served with in the Senate, who thought we ought to do the right thing because it was right, that you ought to appeal to people to get involved in uh, politics and government um, uh, on, on the grounds of morality, doing the right thing out of the, uh, sort of the goodness of your heart. Somehow that never, uh, you know, that, that didn't seem to be uh, the reason why people with power got involved in politics. It wasn't uh, for morality reasons, it was because of their self-interest. And, and, and I began to think about that, that uh, uh, we ought to organize around people's self-interest, around economic class issues. And, uh, and, and I think that uh, uh, there was a great deal of, uh, uh, of misunderstanding of the old time populace by, by some historians. The idea that, uh, uh, that you know, that some people wrote and I, even I, uh, once thought until I read Larry Goodwin's great book uh, and one time reviewed for the Texas Observer back in 1977 about historic populism. It wasn't uh, racist. Their idea was that you can organize across race and age and gender lines around economic class uh, issues, around economic self-interest and against concentrated uh, economic power, which in our system translates into concentrated political power. And then, uh, as, as I began to uh, grow in that regard toward uh, populism, I began to run on to some. I got involved with uh, Jim Hightower, for one thing. He was, when I first uh, was working for the sainted Ralph Yarbrough, uh, 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 Senator Yarbrough from Texas, and I got involved with, uh, with Ralph Nader. Ralph and I, one time, we bought, each bought one share of stock in uh, General Motors. And we went to the stockholders meeting with five uh, s uh, minority stockholder proposals. Uh, one of those that I presented was that uh, General Motors uh, would recognize that it was not a human-sized institution, uh, was unmanageable, and that it should voluntarily break itself down into five competing companies. Uh, <laughs> Like all our other resolutions, that uh, each of them, that one got uh, two votes. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're, we were still, we're still right. The, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and I began to, in other ways, uh, fight against a monopoly and oligopolistic uh, power. And uh, Jim Hightower and I got involved in, uh, in, in two or three things. And uh, Jim was then head of uh, uh, Agribusiness Accountability Project, writing uh, books like The Great American Grain Robbery and about um, uh, hard tomatoes, hard times, and eat your heart out. Uh, I think that uh, th there's no question that the kind of things that uh, uh, populism stands for today uh, are supported, uh, the polls all show this, by a majority of, uh, uh, of Americans. And that, uh, that it's important that you get away from a lot of these kind of side issues uh, and, and get into real economic class issues so that people can see that their, uh, their interests are common and that if they get themselves together, they're, they're a majority and can take back control of their government.